Hello, we're here with Hollis Shadling, who has a special exhibit here at the International Quilt Festival 2018. And it's a spectacularly beautiful, um, wonderful exhibit, Stories of West Africa, a, an issue near and dear to her heart. And Hollis, I know you have exhibited here many times. You were major prize winners. Um, so you've been around the International Quilt Festival for a very long time. This is my 20th year in a row teaching here. I should get a <laughs> badge for that. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so with the Craft Industry Alliance, I would like to get a little bit of a, a, a story of how you worked with them to get this special exhibit here in the show. This is one of the premier quilt exhibits in the world where you get what, 40,000 eyes a day mm -hmm. that come through the exhibit. So tell us a little bit of the background of how, how that happened for you. Okay. Um, once I had the exhibition um, almost finished, because if you wait till it's done and then you start to do it, it just takes forever. So once I had four or five pieces that I could present, I put together a presentation package and I started sending that out to different places. And I actually sent it to 75 venues. That's and, a lot of work. And got it into nine. So, nice. good or bad, that's what it is. And I, most places want to have it sent digitally. So I sent it all digitally in and where they could click on a, a link and see the imagery. Right. And um, so I had all the information, the cost of the exhibition, mm -hmm. the, you know, all of these um, things. It was very clear. All the details. And, yes, it was all the details. How many pieces there were, the um, how long it was available, the dates it was available, the, if, I have a, if you have a rental fee for it, if they cover the transportation or if you cover the transportation, that they, you know, I asked that they uncover the, cover the insurance, all of these things. Mm -hmm. That's what, you have to have all of that information information in there right and then you have to follow up with phone calls afterward because that's a really hard one is to you know have the right person to send it to follow it up with a phone call because they get so many inquiries that that's a that's a really a gentle important reminder part. follow up is a gentle really reminder follow up and I can you can always say just want to make sure that you did get the email and right. I found out two-thirds of them never did because it, it may not have been as personal enough right or it might have gone into their spam box or and it's getting it's getting your foot in the door and it's getting finding your that foot right in the person door. so did they require you to premiere this exhibit here because I know with a lot of the special exhibits that IQF is big on they want to be the first to show it's the first quilt venue okay so good. that's not a museum right that is a show and yes this is actually the only quilt show that this is going to right. be going to and so I uh, I I planned out ahead of time where I wanted it to go I preferred for it to go to museums and of although course. quilt shows the problem with quilt shows it's not a problem a wonderful thing about them is you get a lot of people in a short period of time yeah and and so that's a really really good thing but it is a short period of it time is a short there. period of time and they often need them longer ahead and you know keep them longer mm -hmm. afterward because they're packing up so many quilts and right. so um i i just i chose this one because i've been coming here for so long right people right. know me here because and I people teach. do buy things from they this do. show all they the time um why don't you tell me in in a short give me the pitch for the exhibit tell me what it is you're promoting and um what the issue is and how it's dear to your heart okay Stories of West Africa is really, I'm passionate about bringing across the message of the positive, wonderful people and the, the everyday life that I actually experienced when I lived there for the 12 years I lived there. Um, the joy, the, the beauty of the fabrics, the, the liveliness. I wanted to bring that across because we, bear, we rarely hear about the negative things. I mean, the good things in Africa, right. we always hear the negative. And so I created a coloring book that's an educational coloring book called Stories of West Africa. And it's actually, I call it an educational coloring book because my goal is to get it into the schools. Mm -hmm. And there are stories in the back that schools are, the Carolina Friends School used it this year, and there or last year, and they're using it for 
to write their syllabus because it fits into their fourth or fifth grade curriculum. And the kids, uh, I, we found a sponsor, or they found a sponsor, who would buy 60 books for the children for two years. Each child got their own book. Then with the information that's in the book, they can write um, reports about it. They get to color them. The pages are detachable. And, and so, it's, it's a wonderful way to teach them social studies, other cultures, art, because a lot of this stuff is getting cut out of the schools. Oh, absolutely. And, so, and we're also so Eurocentric that some people, yes. you hear Africa and they think it's like one country instead of 50. That's right. So, and so, so tell Africa's us, not represented enough. I want to bring the positive. Good. Tell us um, where we can find this coloring book. The coloring book can be found at my website, hollisart.com. It's pretty easy to remember. It can also be found on Amazon. Stories of West Africa is what it's called. Great. So um, we don't charge you shipping either. So you can get it <laughs> at either place. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for your time. And it truly is a, just a spectacularly gorgeous exhibit. And the work you're doing is so needed and so important. So thank you so much. Thank for you, Lyric. I really appreciate All it. Right. Thanks, Hollis. Okay. Bye bye.